Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is so tragic. I just I, I couldn't help laughing at it. So when Brexiteers talked about controlling borders, you remember that? Now, I have to confess, I seem to have made a bit of a mistake because I thought they meant borders between the UK and other countries. It's possible that some Brexit supporters thought that as well. Uh, it turns out what they actually meant was putting borders inside our own country and then controlling those. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, as we race towards the intended end of the Brexit transition period and towards Brexit reality, you can expect the government to increasingly move away from its pro-Brexit rhetoric of the past few years, you know, no downsides, only upsides, and towards actual planning to mitigate some of the horrendous damage you know, those downsides that apparently didn't exist, that many of us warned was an inevitable consequence of their actions. And borders is a big one. <laughs> I mean, in terms of what we're losing as a result of leaving the EU without a deal, especially, most will not be noticed by the general population, even though they will suffer the consequences, but they will not make the link. They won't see the association. But there's no hiding chaos at the borders. Now, I've talked recently about the giant lorry parks that the government are building in order to transfer the gridlock of lorries on our roads as a consequence of not having border facilities to carry out the massively increased number of checks that will be required. Because one central political strategy of Brexit from the point of view of Boris Johnson seems to be to try and fool us that Brexit has already happened. Uh, and he's got some supporters already thinking that, you know, Brexit happened on January the 31st. We left the EU. So anything bad that happens from now on has got nothing to do with Brexit, something else. It might be the mean old EU still, but it's not Brexit because Brexit's happened, hasn't it? But I think if you see a load of chaos happening the second we leave the transition period, I think people might just make the link. So he wants to avoid, he wants to avoid the, the chaos being visible. So they built the lorry parks to transfer the problem. But but all that does is it just solves the problem of lorries being stationary on the roads, blocking up all the roads. It's, it's just a solution that dumps those stationary lorries from the roads to somewhere else. It doesn't actually move those lorries through the customs checks. It doesn't get them across the border and back again in order to facilitate the trade include an essential trade in commodities such as food and medicines, which, again, the British population will notice if there are holdups. In fact, the medicines arguably is more serious politically because food shortages will hurt the poorest in our society. The governments, you know, the conservative specifically don't care about them. I mean, they don't really care about anyone but themselves, but the bulk of the poorest in the country tend not to vote conservative. I mean, when it comes to food shortages, uh, those of us with more money will notice there'll be certain things we can't get, but it'll be very much like COVID pandemic situation. There were things I couldn't get. I couldn't get my Heinz Mulligatawny soup. Boo hoo. I could still get food. I could get plenty of it. I could get enough variety. This would be something that hits the, the very poorest because prices will go up as well and, and some of the cheaper stuff won't be available. But everyone needs medicines at some point even if you're wealthier, you know, and breakdowns in the supply of those will be noticed by all demographics, including those who do vote conservative. Imagine those lots of elderly voters who are much more likely to need those medicines. Some of those people need those medicines to live. So the government need a plan to get the lorries moving through the customs checks more quickly. They understand that they're not that thick, but they can't build the systems quickly enough. Industry experts say this takes years. No problem, you may think. It was years ago that we had the referendum and that the government announced its intention to leave the EU. They've had years to prepare. Sure, absolutely. But they didn't do that preparation. And this isn't just about Theresa May. Boris Johnson didn't exactly spring into action when he became prime minister either. And bear in mind that when he became prime minister, he said we would be leaving the EU in October, last October. He's now been given an extra 14 months to prepare. Should be luxury but until recently has actually done nothing at all. So the obvious response to delay the cliff edge Brexit until we'd prepared, extend the transition period. Now, no dice, said Boris Johnson, we're not extending the transition period. Okay then, so on the one hand, 
we can't carry out the checks and collection of tariffs demanded by World Trade Organization rules, the ones that Brexiteers are so happy to be engaging with. Michael Gove has said as much, not just industry insiders. On the other hand, we can't just ignore World Trade Organization rules and carry on behaving as if nothing has changed because that would be to give the EU a competitive advantage. So if we try to carry out customs checks incoming, can't do anything about outgoing, that's up to other countries, but incoming, we just treated it exactly the same. Great, would think uh, EU companies, that's fantastic, no problem. Unfortunately, Chinese companies and United States companies would think differently because it would hurt them. And they are both big and ugly enough to clobber us over it. They would not take this line down. So what are the government going to do? I have no idea. And neither, it seems, do they. This is because we can see from news this week that ideas are still bouncing around Whitehall about what to do about it. One of which, I saw a report on this morning, is a plan to put a border effectively around Kent, which is the county containing the vital port of Dover, as well as Folkestone, where Eurotunnel uh, is accessed. No, I'm not kidding, by the way. So the Department of Transport is considering a proposal to require hauliers to carry what is called, I mean, digitally, I imagine, uh, a Kent access permit. So essentially, a passport that allows lorry drivers to be able to drive into Kent if they are intending to go to Dover or Folkestone. In other words, if they want to go to one of those two major ports, they need a passport. So you create a border around Kent. And this would be very much in line with the government's generally preferred solution to our customers' problems. You know, get hauliers to fill in all the documentation online well in advance, all on the system, so that it can all be checked, so that by the time the physical lorry gets to the physical port, Everything's been sorted, the system's dealt with it, and they can then just pass through very quickly and easily. A few random checks here and there, of course, but, you know, they can go through. And that sounds fine. What's the problem, Phil? There isn't a problem if we had such a system. But the main problem here is that the IT systems required to manage this don't exist. Industry insiders said that it would take years to design such a system and get it fully operational. At the start of the year, Michael Gove seemed happy to say that it wouldn't be ready before 2024, to which I was saying, well, what are you expecting to do between 2021 and 2024 then? Well, and the system that needs to be up and running before the end of the year, because hauliers need to get time to get to grips with it, they, they, you can't just have this thing go live at the end of the year. No one will know how to use it. And that's for those companies that are large enough to be able to hire staff specifically to carry out the massive amount of extra bureaucracy required to use it. Because you're talking about using a system, which even if it existed, isn't needed at the moment. So you need extra staff to be able to put all the stuff on that system. What about smaller companies? They can't pay staff just to be able to put that on. It's not. So they would need to subcontract that work out. But nobody can do anything at the moment because we do not have the system to even practice on beforehand, to get used to it. And this non-existent system, this new non-existent system, is also going to fine lorry drivers who fall foul of it. So if a haulier, a lorry driver, is found to be heading to either Dover or Folkestone, they will be fined £300 if they do not have this passport. Now consider this. So, the system doesn't exist. Realistically, it can't exist for years. However, it has to exist and exist quickly. So a rushed ramshackle system will be set up. They will have to set something up. Um, and we've seen what happens when they set up a ramshackle system quickly because we've seen that with COVID. Now, anyone with experience of IT systems know that it will fail hard. So what will happen is you'll have a system that hauliers will use correctly from their end. But the so-called Kent access permit will be lost in the system for some people. There will be problems. So then what will happen is that driver will then be caught. The system will say they don't have the permit. So they'll be fined £300 for heading to Dover without the access that they thought they had. To say nothing of the fact that the goods they're transporting won't get to where they need to anywhere near in time. Because the system will have lost the paperwork. And it will be a complete disaster. I mean, frankly, even if the system went live today... 
I think you would still argue that there isn't enough time to solve all the teething problems that inevitably come with any new system going online by the end of 2020. But the system isn't live. In fact, it hasn't even begun because this particular part of it is a proposal. This isn't a policy decision. Now, if the online registration system for hauliers to fill in their customs declarations was at least in operation, if we at least had that in operation, then maybe it could be realistic to bolt on this extra bit. Um, possibly that would be achievable within the time frame. I don't know. I'm not an expert. But we don't have any part of the system. And remember, what's been discussed here is we need multiple IT systems to form the collective customers management system. So we need to stitch multiple IT systems together, none of which actually exist at the moment. And what this also proves is that the government still do not know how they are going to deal with border chaos on January the 1st, 2021. I'll say again, this isn't an announcement of a policy. This is a proposal for a policy that hasn't as yet been decided. The government were told at the start of this year by both their own civil service and industry experts that we cannot prepare for trade barriers with the EU by the end of 2020. And here we are over half a year later and with less than five months to go and the government still haven't even decided what to do, let alone let alone given the time to actually do it when they do make their minds up. And for anyone, just as a final thing, for anyone who voted for these clowns in December, let me just make this appeal. Please pay careful attention. Now we all make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes, but the worst types of mistakes are not so much the ones with very terrible consequences, although they tend to be quite bad mistakes. The worst mistakes are the ones that are repeated because it means you didn't learn anything. Can we please learn something? Can we actually pay attention to what's going on now and pay attention to what happens next year and actually learn something? It'll still be disastrous, but dear God, can we stop making the same mistakes? But there it is. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I will see you later.